Welcome to the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. Welcome to the Prog Talks, an interview series by the Prog Space where we will be talking to musicians in all corners of the progressive music scene. Welcome back to the Prog Talks, everyone. Once again with me, Uncle Prog, and today I'm very happy I have with me one of the true veterans, I would say, of US progressive metal. This is Jason Tipton. So nice to have you on, Jason. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. Thank you for having me and talking about uh, A Dying Planet, man. Excited oh, yeah. to do it. I'm very eager to talk about The Dying Planet because... I've had the chance to listen to the album now for a little while and I'm really enjoying it. And of course, you have started to have a little bit of feedback. You know, the album isn't fully out until the 17th of September, right? But right. you've had a couple of singles out and I also seem to see some reviews starting to pop up. How are how has the reception been to the to what you have released yeah. so far? Yeah, so far, yeah, no, it's been real positive. So I'm real pleased about that. And I just love the material. It was a definitely a labor of love. And every song is, I mean, I'm very pleased with. It's not like any filler at all. So, and uh, the guys in the group are great. Uh, having Marco on drums, Brian on bass, and Paul on vocals. Yeah. And these guys really did an outstanding job. So, yeah, it's... Uh, we're all very, very pleased and excited to get the release out there. I can imagine. You you know, I, 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 it's not like I had planned that question, but since you brought it up, you know, without filler on the album, as you said, is that something right. that sort of becomes, um, as, as you become more experienced, you know, you have so many albums behind you. Are you less and less, you know, tolerant of filler on, <laughs> on your albums? I think, yeah, well, you know, definitely now I, I, I have that because uh, there are some albums I was like, it could have been like from demo to demo, from things from yeah. before using and kind of compiling. And also, you know, that now that I do the recordings myself, it isn't yeah. like we're on, under the gun, like, you know, you might not know the whole outlook of how everything's going to sound and you're just going in and thinking like we got the vibe and things. Yeah. And then you kind of listen to things and say, well, I wish I could have added this or something like that. But you know, you're, you're worried about the recording time and yeah. things, you know, there's a press for time here. At least I can format things the way I like it and yeah. keep formatting it to where it's like, when your ears are pleased, you know, I mean, with that, it could be the littlest things, you know, I mean, I didn't hit the harmonic exactly the way I wanted it, even though no one could probably tell you're very like, mm, you, you, it, it blows up for you. You know, I mean, you can hear it and everything and the more it keeps going and you hear it, you're like, yeah, I got to change that. So yeah, it becomes, uh, you, you do become obsessed with it. Yeah. You know? Well, I I, yeah. I I I hear similar stuff from from many musicians I talk to, and and I, I'm I'm guessing you know now with the the opportunity like you say to have your own studio and and all that stuff, like you said before, you were looking at the clock and seeing your money tick away. So <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. So maybe yeah. you were more yeah. like likely to say, well, this is what we got on the budget we got, and we we put it on the album and we released the album, right? right? Yeah. Right. And and there's some cool things with that, too. I mean, there is, you know, it's there's a rawness and things that are very cool. So, you know, there there's benefits to both. You know, yeah. I mean, we were doing towers, you know, of Avarice for zero hour. And we were going in there and we're like, how is this going to exactly sound? I mean, yeah. we were doing live recordings of like, you know, just just putting two mics out there with an A dot, you know what I mean? And just kind of seeing and we're like, I think it sounds good. So why don't we go and try and record this thing, you know? So here, it doesn't lie to you. No. You know what I mean? You know, so you're hearing it and that's all its brilliance and everything at the beginning because, you know, technology has just come such a long way. And so uh, you have a much better outlook of like how these things are going to come together. Yeah, I'm thinking also like with with uh, an album like the aforementioned Towers of Avarice, 
which which pushes the boundary in so many directions at once. And then, in addition, you know, it it was your second album as uh, Zero Hour, right? So it must have been quite, uh, you know, challenging experience to not only musically be able to perform at that level, but also maybe trying to capture that on <laughs> oh, on an no. album. I still have I still have nightmares of Powers of Anger. So yes, I mean I, that was just a, we went through a lot to get that album done yeah i mean they were just like i remember we were just going to santa rosa to go record and my car would break down then we have to go take the bus back and then grab my brother's truck and go i mean there was things that just go <laughs> along with that yeah. and you're, it was like i'm at home i could do it no you're driving like almost a couple hours one way exactly. going in and trying to get four hours of vocals coming back <laughs> It was a lot of work, man. So, like you say, it's 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 pros and cons, but I would guess that that there are a lot of pros about the way you're able to do right. your recordings uh, now. Oh, yeah. yeah, I don't want to go back to the old process. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> we mentioned zero hour. Of course, we're going to be returning a bit to that later. Uh, but you have also re- released amazing music with uh, synthesis, abnormal thought patterns, and also your solo albums. Of course, you released two solo albums under your own name. Um, like um, a dying planet seems less technically focused and and maybe more melodically focused. Uh, what would you say is the major difference between uh, dying planet and your previous or your other projects and bands? Well, for a dying planet, especially for when the skies are gray, everything was written. You know, the lyrics, melody lines, all the music is it was on me. Yeah. Opposed to usually I have like last time I had my brother or somebody, you know, who was doing the lyrics and everything, which is great. And I'm quite exhausted by the end of the music. You know what I mean? You put your heart and soul in all that. Yeah. And then oh thank goodness. You you push it off to somebody else and see what they create with it. But this particular material, I was conscious the whole time. It's like I wanted to make sure that I'm singing to it. I'm enjoying the melody lines I like. And with a great singer like Paul, you could just... The the beauty of having Paul in the band, I mean, he captures everything what you want and more because he's got such amazing harmonies and a beautiful voice. And he can get that grit, too. He can go into character a little bit. And uh, so you're utilizing all that and keeping in mind you got a great singer here yeah. who could do all that. and let's make it you know lots of harmonies lots of everything fill the space up yeah you know what i mean he's the perfect guy for it so and what i love about paul is that i send it to him he sends it back to me i didn't have to fix anything what mm. you hear is what he sent me you know what I mean? So there's a great flow there. You know, I, I haven't had that with anybody else, really. I mean, so that was the great part. And the guys, uh, you know, Marco and and Brian, those guys, amazing rhythm section. I mean, I really think they brought just such great elements to this particular release. And then I'm just, you know, just looking forward to what everybody thinks of it. You know, so far it's been very positive and I'm very pleased with the material. Yeah, I have to say, you know, you're talking about Paul, of course, that we're talking about Paul Adrian Villa Real, which is, of course, right. uh, the vocalist from from uh, Sun Caged, uh, right. where he used to right. be, be the vocalist, as, uh, has a voice that is like instantly reminds me of, you know, like symphonic rock bands like Kansas or Styx right. or stuff like that. And just like yeah. you say, with the with the layering and all that stuff, the you know the har- harmonies, the choirs, would you say that the the album is leaning a little bit more to more towards progressive rock this time than you know some of your other projects? You know, you just it wasn't meant to exactly be like that, you know. But um, you keep in mind who are the guys in your group. You know, I mean, when writing this, you know, and he's strong with all that stuff. So I'm like, I know he could replicate what we want because he did that with Troy's lyrics you yeah. know, before. And I'm like, well, Paul is going to hammer this all out. And he did. You know what I mean? And then you have like Brian was amazing on the bass, you know, bringing these cool like sort of grooves that, in the sense of maybe Tesseract or other. He, he, you know, he's been getting a lot of great praise and so has Marco. Yeah. 
because they're an amazing rhythm section, those guys. And uh, yeah, all the elements were just, yeah. You, yeah. you When you think about that, and especially with Paul, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's going to kind of make you understand which direction you need to go, mm. you know, I mean, because of the, all the strong points he has. And it was beautiful because I wanted to make sure there was lots of, not one place was feeling uh, empty. Yeah. You know, there was lots of vocals and things, you know, the more the merrier I felt, you know, yeah. I mean, that's what I wanted. So, because some things you want to let breathe and everything, but no, that amazing with the vocals, what, what he did, you know, he really, it, it's very full sounding album. Very yeah. full sounding. I agree. And he brings uh, like a warmth to the table with his vocals, which is, is really, you know, building up on, on the music of the album. It's really, really, you, I, I really, really enjoyed listening to it. I have to say, yeah, you know, you know, in the, in the sense that I wanted to ask you, you know, who's behind the lyrics of the album, but you already told me that this time you, you were the guy who had right. to do the lyrics. So, right. so then you are actually the right person to ask about this then. So uh, the, when the skies are gray, is there a concept or a theme to the album? Obviously what's going on in the world right now, you know, uh, there's some things, you know, a dying planet, it does stand for, for, you know, what we have to look into the future and see what's yeah. going to be better for, you know what I mean? Right now, I mean, here in California, we have the fires going on like crazy. Yes. You know what I mean? And it, this has been the new norm for about four or five years. Mm. You know, luckily I'm out of, you know, the danger, but I mean, the air quality is horrible this way because it's just nothing but smoke. And this has been going on. And a lot of people don't even know about it, and, which I could understand, you know. And But the, the problem is they're destroying things by what's going to happen next. Right now, our water levels are at the lowest they've ever been. You know, you have Lake Mead and the Colorado River. I mean, there's just the water level is so low. You know what I mean? It's scary. And now what are they going to do? The first thing they'll do, the government, it was what they'll do is they will tell the farmers, you can't water your crops. Yeah. And we need our farmers. Well, of you know course. what I mean? And of course, how they're going to see it is, well, this is our opportunity to come in and build houses over this area, which is going to take up water as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just, that's the problem. You know, we have to think about the future and what's good for the, but I mean, we could go on and on yeah, about that. I agree. You know, with yeah. the times are going on right now, but um, like, but like, there's also for like hope for tomorrow. You know, yeah. needing a positive message. You know, hey, you know, with this, keep holding on. You know, you have people around you. Happiness is a choice. You know, find that happiness. Uh, the last song being about my brother and his. It's a father's love being a, about. Him and he named his son after me, Jason. Oh, and yeah. it's just, mm. you know, so that's my my song to them, you know. So there's many different things. Also talking about when the skies are great. Unfortunately, we have a terrible homeless problem here. Yeah. And that's where that directs, you know what I mean? But there's homeless problems all over the world. Yes. And we can't there is. Take care of, you know, we can't even take care of our own people. No. So Again, we could go on to so many debates and so many things that need to be done. Uh, hopefully, it just seems like it's getting worse. You know, I, we have to think about what's going to happen for the future. For yeah. it's a, the future. I find that interesting, of course, because it's it's clear that the the lyrical content and and you know the whole concept is quite socially conscious. And, you know, it's dealing with reality and real problems. And, and I wanted to say that, of course, that's quite a bit different than a lot of bands, you know, who have more of a a, a different approach, especially when, when you go into metal. But for you guys, it's I feel like it's always been that way. Uh, you know, we talked right. about the Towers of Avarice, you know, just the title of that right. album. Right. Even back to the beginning, it feels like you guys have been focusing on the real world and, uh, you know. Well, if you take the track Embrace, the yeah. long track, what's going on in Afghanistan? Mm. You know what I mean? This is what's good. You know, if you listen to that, there's, you know, people are trying to find freedom. You know, their, you know, their ancestor lands, you know, are no longer 
You know what I mean? It's been taken. You know what I mean? It's it's we touch upon on those subjects. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I find it interesting that a band uh, like yours uh, or most of your projects really has has this kind of you know. No matter if you call it like socially conscious or not, but at least it's dealing with reality in a very harsh way sometimes, which is, it's, I guess it's, uh, well, just uh, the name of the band <laughs> for it a dying it planet. Yeah. It, it, it says right. it all. Right. So, right. so yeah, you, you know, um, I want to return a little bit to, you know, we talked about Paul and the vocals and um, yeah. I want to yeah. return to 2018 and facing the incurable which was the last right. album from from a dying planet there you had several vocalists participating uh Ludo, Luda Arno uh Eric Roswald which of course is well known from also being a zero hour vocalist um and i believe also your brother was uh, doing some vocals on that yeah, album right he yeah did, he, he was it, originally my brother was going to do the whole thing yeah but my brother unfortunately has the injury to his arm, which also yeah. he has uh, a really bad with his neck and everything. He's mm. got like, I, they did like, he has like, what was it? Like six pinched nerves in his mm. neck and all these terrible things when he went to go get like MRIs done and everything. And, yeah. and even when he sings, there's, everything's reacting you know and my poor you know my brother is doing good you know i i don't want to make it like because unfortunately yeah my brother hasn't played bass in over six years he hasn't and everything that's what's stemmed to the issues he's had yeah uh he's not able to do music you know and he loves doing music so now you know what's what's his but he has his children he's doing great with that and his wife and and he's got like a million vinyls here at my house that I have to eventually bring to him. I see. I, well, he's going to have to come here and it, it, there's just too many. You know what I mean? The guy is like, he can open up his own record shop. I see. I see. But, yeah. yeah, he loves, I mean, he loves his vinyls. It seems like every day I'm getting a package at the door. So, I mean, that guy is so into his vinyls. God bless him. I love him. Well, yeah, but he, it is the time. It is the time. Time for it as well. You know, I'm. I'm sure someone like Troy has never sort of uh, stopped uh, collecting and listening. But uh, everyone seems to be interested in vinyl albums uh, these days. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, you you talked a little bit about his uh, his uh, shoulder or or arm injury because I wanted to mention that, of course, that that. Um, uh, to ask you about, you know, how his situation is and if he has the opportunity to be involved with your music in any of your bands in any way or, yeah. I mean, I mean, I would love to have him, but, you know, but uh, it's, you know, unfortunately, I think, you know, my brother, he had the ulnar nerve entrapment surgery. So basically what happened was he was lifting, he was doing bicep curls. Yep. And basically what ended up happening is, the bone crushed his funny bone nerve, the ulnar nerve. I see. And so he was not getting, he was dealing with muscle atrophy and he wasn't getting any feeling with his left hand. You know what I mean? So even the hardest thing for him was just to hold down one note, you know, and go like this because it would just kind of, it just light him up. Yeah. So he did go to a Stanford doctor. He went and had this surgery, uh, the ulnar nerve entrapment surgery. And these guys think they can play God to you you know what i mean they should have i mean he was in, in so much pain and believing that the stanford doctor is going to help him yeah. he's like tell him oh yeah you'll be playing you'll be doing this and that and when you hear that but you know the only thing i can recommend is just go <laughs> You, you do want to get as many go to as many doctors as possible yeah. you know get many opinions you know what's going on with your situation but my brother was in he, he was in so much pain. You know, I mean, lots of pain. Then he had the surgery done. They did uh, release the entrapment, but the problem is he's never got the strength back. Mm. You know what I mean? And when he was trying to play and everything, Zero Hour was done because we were like, you know, he, he couldn't do a lot nope. of certain things. That's that was, it. you know. And then uh, we did do abnormal thought patterns and he could work around the situation a little bit and he did yep. the same with synthesis but just when you thought he was taking a step forward it, it would take two steps back so yeah. it was doing the reverse effect and i know i mean he went as 
as far as he could with it. I mean, and it just, I remember we did our uh, one show together. I mean, we did do a tour with Abnormal Thought Patterns, but he couldn't be part of it. We found out at the end that he wasn't, but he came out on the road with us and sold merchandise, things like that. But, you know, uh, we did our last show and it was a great show. It was like he felt so great. And and we had a great crowd. The music was done perfectly. We were real stoked. And my brother was like, I think I'm going to be okay. You know, I think this is going to, we're going to figure this one out. He gets hit again. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's just, so my brother, yeah, uh, I'm happy to say he's doing very well, though. He's got his wife and his two children, and he's doing great. And uh, this is not like a sad story in the end. You know what I mean? But he absolutely, if my brother had a chance to he do would, music, he would yeah. do it. Yeah, it's yeah. just, but yeah, it's, he's in a good place. And uh, he's also, he's my biggest supporter. My goodness, big supporter. Yeah, he's great. Well, I could, I can imagine, you know, doing that one step forward, two step back thing, thing all the yeah. time will sap your motivation for, for that part of your life, you know, and, and, and then things right. move move on with other parts of your life becoming important to you and and so but right. i i just wanted to hear because he's been a part of so many of the uh, amazing albums that i love so yeah, well, no, i'm glad you. i'm glad to hear that he's doing well uh, yeah 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 no he's he's doing great man he's yeah. doing great so then when you know when you went started to work on this album then was did you already had have in mind that you would use only paul as the vocalist or did you think that you would do something like last time that have a, like different people? No, I loved how Paul sounded. I, I was like, he's he's the right guy. Yeah. I love his voice. And I'm like, this is the guy. No doubt about it. <laughs> I mean, resist. Yeah, he. So and it's nice because, I mean, we, we again, initially, we were going to have Troy sing the whole thing. I mean, but it just got to the point where he couldn't. Mm. So that's when, thank goodness, you know, Paul was great to help us out. And so was Eric. They were great to help us out. And yeah, so, but no, Paul was like, I mean, when I heard the material with him and everything, it was just like, Oh, I, I want this guy to be the guy. Mm. And luckily we all had a great vibe and we enjoyed doing the stuff together, all the material with, with the members and these are the four guys we yeah. are you know with paul brian and marco and myself you know we're a dying planet and i love it yeah well i'm uh then then i feel it's natural to to ask my next question you know is is a dying planet a studio project only or could you imagine mm-hmm. when when times when when you things become more hopefully better for for musicians to go out could you imagine going taking this crew out on the road and, and playing playing this music live i would love to i would love to you know um obviously time will tell see what we're going to do with everything well, uh, then, of course, yeah. but uh yeah i mean we, it was kind of weird because initially you know with having my brother and then having the changes but now we have the group of gods yeah. that we know we can you know and even uh, marco and brian helped me out we did uh, the Sea of Tranquility Fest, you know, doing the Zero Hour song and everything. So, yeah, I mean, these guys, w- w- we could do it. You know, if the, it, it will also be timing with everything and everything's right and we can make it happen, not have the issues we're having right now yes, in the course. world. Yeah. But uh, the second, but if you were to ask me from the first release, I would say, I don't know yeah. if this is going to be just a project thing or you know are but we're a real band and if the opportunity strikes itself that we could go do something I, i'm in yeah, yeah to do it so, because yeah. because i do feel like this is uh the the first album had more of a feel of a, a like a, a a musical project or or something right. than this one yeah. has so so do you feel like uh like this new album feels like a natural continuation of of uh, facing the incurable or do you feel like this is like a new step or a, like a, a new thing for, for the band? It's kind of both. I mean, because in the weird sense, I mean, I love the material from the first album. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just that, that it, the only thing was then, obviously, uh, focus got a little divided. It stayed focused, of course, but obviously we were bringing other people in. It yeah. changed when Roy couldn't sing the whole thing, that obviously we're 
things didn't go accordingly to plan. Yeah. Okay, where this album did, you know what I mean? Where it felt like, okay, we know who the band is. Mm-hmm. And I don't think we're going to have any issues of what's going on. You know what I mean? So, yes, now it's got more of the feel of like, yes, we're a band. Yeah. Okay. And, and, you know, um, so I think we had to go through the first steps of the first album and then to know exactly what this band is. Yeah. And it's been three years, right, since the debut. So right. did you did you start uh, like uh, immediately after the, fir- after the release of the de- debut album to write new stuff and work on? Or how old is the material on, on, on this? new album yeah no i mean it you know i i started pretty quick I, i'm a I'm, i'm a pretty fast writer you know when i want to put my mind to it and go to it you know i mean as a matter of fact if i was to tell you you know as of uh last week i mean i finished writing and recording all of the guitars and keys for the next album you know what i mean so we'll, wow. be, we'll be going on again you know what i mean uh, yeah. yeah i don't And this was the time to do it. I mean, obviously, with everything going on now, if mm. we're back to the real world of everything, and I, I don't know, but I was just trying to make the most of this time right now, yeah. and and the ideas were just pouring out. So why not do it? So yeah, we will definitely have another release. You know, at this point, just knowing that we have the groundwork of everything, but obviously, it helps that we're very proud. Of When the skies are gray, I mean, yes, because you know, if you feel good about something, you're okay about diving into another album and getting into it. So oh, yeah, because that was very rewarding to hear the end result, you know, with this one. Well, it feels both both the way you're talking about it, and of course, listening to the to the music itself, it feels like uh, Dying Planet is in a very good place right now, and like the right. found the foundation seems very strong for you guys to do, you know, whatever you want to do. If it's more music right. or if it's a live live performance yeah. or whatever, right? I think we've tested the waters enough to know where we stand as a group, and uh, we're comfortable with all, you know. So, yeah, absolutely, yeah, we're we're on a good path right now. We're 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 on the high, so we'll <laughs> just, hopefully it just stays on that. You know, bands are it, there's a lot of work in bands, but yeah. right now we're we're in a real good place. If you are enjoying this interview, please head over to theprogspace.com for more reviews, articles, pictures and interviews all about progressive music. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. theprogspace.com Glad to hear that. You know, uh, I mentioned in the in- introduction that uh, I consider you and your brother, of course, to be uh, like veterans of American progressive uh, metal. Right. Right. So, I, yeah. I, so I wanna, so I wanna sort of pick your mind a little because I'm, you know, being a, a old school prog metal nerd myself. I've, sure. I wanted to ask yeah. you, you know, uh, when did you your interest in pro- progressive music start, and what were sort of the first bands and artists that you found within the genre and that like inspired you to to create this type of music and yeah my brother was just a huge rainbow fan yeah. so i mean when you heard like richie blackmore's rainbow and stargazer a jam like that just opens like your your ears and you're like wow listen to this you know what i mean it's 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 saying something it's not just a regular song that's just got a verse chorus this and that you know it was It was telling a story. Yeah. You know, I mean, you were lost in and uh, Ryan James vocals. Still, to me, the best metal vocalist ever. Yeah, uh, I agree with you. Yeah, he just tells the story, and uh, you get lost into it. And gosh, you know, just so many great attributes. I mean, obviously, you have the amazing riffing of uh, Richie Blackmore, but it's like even the and Cozy Powell and all these guys. But even the ending where it's like da, 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 where you have Tony yeah. Carey doing it. I the mean, key, yeah, the keyboard part just, just so yeah. Money. You yeah. know what I mean, it's so money, and it's like you either get it or you don't, you know. And there, and of course, me being a, a big Pink Floyd fan, and um, also, you know, you, there's also a lot of elements where my brother and I listen to a lot of Pat Metheny, and mm-hmm. you know, and you hear a lot of his long, um, I guess you get the long songs that he has on his material. I've always gravitated to. So, um, and 
I don't know. To me, there's very a lot of prog elements into that with him and like I, I agree. You know, there's a lot of this this uh, what can you say technicality that comes from jazz fusion that that sort of you know that I wanted to ask about that. You know, because because with zero hour, of course, you were uh, I would say a very like impressively technical and the instrumentation was very impressive so where did you where did the inspiration for for that side of your playing come from you know i like you try going back and it's like i i I mean we loved music right off the bat my dad being a huge elvis presley fan so Mm. that was being played in the house all the time and my mom was more the she's a hippie where she was Jimi hendrix pink floyd things like that so it's a lot of great music going on in our house and yeah i you know gosh hopefully i'm not going off on from what you're asking question wise but um could you repeat that question again (laughs) i'm gonna kind of fall into my own no (laughs) that's okay i'm happy right here i'm I'm happy as long as you're talking man but but uh, (laughs) what i was asking is i said you know that is is quite impressive the technicality of your music you know the 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 the, the technical metal part and and what i sort of was a little bit like trying to hint that you know you know you got these bands like Watchtower or Voivod or stuff right. like that were were bands like that ever an inspiration to you guys or did that part come out of uh, other places you know i mean uh, you know i like watchtower you know and i know ron ron and i i mean a great guy and things like that he, i even got them on the festival uh for headway oh. i was the one that oh, get I them see. Right over the yeah. So I mean, um, and it was so funny. I ran into Ron. He's like, "Oh yeah, that's right, right." And I'm like, "Yeah, that's right." <laughs> it's so funny, but um, no. Uh, basically, I was around. You know, growing up, but Troy was really into the technical side. Yeah, he and and, and I mean, I got into it too. But I was like, you know. But Troy was looking, you know, he was really in the Fates Warning yeah. and bands like that. You know what I mean? Uh, and I was into bands like Blue Murder. You know what I mean? I really love yeah. John Sykes. And things. So my brother and I have that kind yeah. of thing going on. But we also were huge Shrapnel Records fans. You know what I mean? Where you had all the great players coming out. Exactly, Jason yeah. Beckham, Paul Gilbert, <laughs> Richie Cox, and Greg. All the list goes on and on. Those, I mean, Mike Barney really had an ear for some amazing players. And then I was around some great musicians at the same time, you know, who were really into that. And I was the guy just asking all the questions. How do you do all this stuff? You know what I mean? And my brother was just way ahead of me at that time with all that stuff. You know what I mean? And uh, so my brother was really the person that kind of, you know, he, he he would find from somewhere, but then of course he would always share it with me. Yeah. And Dream Theater, I mean, obviously when the Images of Words came out, I mean, everybody was. Uh, that yeah. was the goods. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's like Dream Theater is the goods. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, people might want to. They're the. <laughs> They're the best at it. They really are. You know what I mean? I'm such a fan. You know what I mean? They're, they're fantastic. And it's amazing that they're still just just bringing it every yeah. time. And they have, this is who we are. Boom. This you know, we're we coming do. out of the gates and giving you all we got. You know what I mean? And I love it. I mean, uh, they're a fantastic group. So, I mean, yes, we were into all those bands. And of course, there was other bands along the way that you enjoy. But, yeah, technical we did, yeah. Especially my brother, he was really into the technical. <laughs> yeah, the, he thing. was the big, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I was, I was thinking about your two uh, solo albums. Of course, you have a Night's Pulse from two right. thousand, right. right? And then there was an album called Seduction in two thousand and five. And I feel like in those albums, maybe you hear a little bit of a different side of your songwriting right. or whatever. There's that and John Sykes thing. Exactly. You know, I mean? you know Neil Sean, I'm a, Journey is one of my favorite bands and I love Neil Sean and I love melody. You know what I mean? Just like when doing the lyrics, you know, and the melody lines for this album. I mean, that's, I love that stuff. So yeah, um, you know, I, I love Joe Satriani. I love, I mean, there's so many guys to be inspired by. And then, yeah, for me, it's like 
with, with abnormal thought patterns, it was like, yeah, throwing everything exactly. at the kid. You know, you know what I mean? is at you. But uh, I love that. I love things that just where you could just, you could relax at night and, oh my goodness, sorry about this. <laughs> where you can relax. Oh my goodness, now everything goes crumbling down. Let's try this again. That's what happens there, see? That's okay, my mechanic man. calling. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, so yeah, I, I almost got a little off there with everything. Where were we at? Sorry yeah, about that. Uh, we were talking about your your oh, solo cool. albums, yeah. Gotcha. Um, and I just wanted a night sounding something that's got really nice, easy vibe to it yeah. and everything. Just I, I I love hearing melody, you know what I mean? And that's got nothing but melody to it. So yeah. uh, that's what I wanted. I love when, you know, you hear Neil Sean, he just he, he could hit a note. David Gilmore, these guys, nice. John Sykes, Gary Moore. Yeah. These guys, you know. They, they could just say something in one note that all these other guys are doing a million notes on it, and, and we can't get it. Those guys just have it. It's just something in their DNA, and it's the way they have that feel with the guitar, that relationship, you know, the way they have that question and answer. And it's uh, quite amazing. And, of course, I mean, I love the guys like Jason Becker, Marty yeah, Freeman, yeah, yeah. and everything. If you can get your mix in there, great. But, yeah, I'm, I'm just a fan of music, yeah. so... If I'm going to do something, I'd like to make bands or whatever I'm doing different from each other, you know, and just not, not anybody saying, oh, this is, I mean, so I, I heard a couple people say that synthesis was like zero hour. And I just was like, come on, nope. there's not even one double bass part in all of synthesis, not one. And if I'm not mistaken, you know, zero hours, very double bass it driven. Is. I mean, just that's one element, you know what I mean? And, but... <laughs> That's, you know, that's, uh, think, you know, you have these things. Yeah, I think people are very quick to latch on to whatever similarities they hear. So, for instance, there, you know, they, they might hear the same kind of vocal, vocal style, and suddenly to them it's the same. But I think, you know, when you dive deeper into it, it's clearly that it's not the same. So, but a follow up then yeah. to to your your talking about your solo albums, you know, since they are uh, come from lo like a, a different side of your musical psyche or whatever do you would you consider doing more solo stuff in the vein of your your two solo albums you know i this one came about just because of the pandemic yeah. i mean i i really even though people kept asking about it and everything like that i was like <laughs> it, it's a nice thought because i would like to do it but it's not my priority mm. i the bands are my priority yeah you know and as i do love doing that style of music you know i mean uh I mean, I, I, I started getting into jazz with my playing and everything. And, and um, obviously, I figured out real quick, even though I was learning, like, you know, when everybody goes through the steps, of, you know, doing Coltrane stuff and Charlie Parker and all this stuff. And I, I went to go, you know, then I went to go see Russell Malone and Mark Whitfield play. These guys play on separate. And and they're just so amazing. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah this yeah. would be forever to do something like this. You know, I'm. I'm a progressive guitar player, number yeah. one. That's it, you know, and I love the metal side. I mean, I got my Iron Maiden shirt on. I mean, exactly. that's where we're at, you know. So, yeah, so uh, music finds you, yeah. but there's just so much to explore, and you'll never you'll never stop exploring. And that's why, I mean, I, I see a lot of guys, I mean, who was it even, you know, you have Chuck Berry, who was still at the end playing and still doing his dance and everything yeah, we yeah, talked yeah. Music makes you feel young, man. And music gives you so much. It, it keeps me very balanced. Yeah, it's very person. it's very invigorating. I, I, I agree with you. And, you know, uh, I want to ask then, you know, I'm, you know, of course, I want to get back to talking a little bit about Zero Hour towards the end here. But I think I think yeah, people I think people who are a fan of you uh, would probably be upset at me if I didn't ask about uh, the excellent uh, synthesis and of course abnormal thought patterns you know the last sure. uh, album from synthesis was re-evolution i think that was 2013 and then with yeah. abnormal thought patterns you released an album in 2015 altered states of consciousness yeah 
Right. And right. so I'm so I'm wondering, can fans of these projects hope to hear anything more from them? Because of course I know understand that you're very uh, busy with both a uh, dying planet and as we're gonna touch on again, zero yeah. hour is happening again as well. Absolutely. Those are, well, how I see it with that, yeah, there is another I mean, it was recorded so long ago. I mean, we have the guitars, keys, vocals, all done for the third synthesis. And this oh, has really? been like forever, though. We're talking like over six, five, six years ago. Oh. You know, but eventually we'll get dr- – it's not my priority, though, because, no. I mean, uh, you know, there's zero hour in the dying planet is my priority and i i'm very pleased being in that you know i mean the rest is just yeah that's if, what if, if for some reason i was like say like i've had things done with these bands and i'm like itching just to do something that will be that sort of thing right um because you know there's yeah, there are going to be things that are obviously priority to you that you of enjoy course. more yeah, and uh, and and I enjoyed synthesis, you know. For but you know, my brother's not in it, you no. know. And then I, I mean, and of course you could say like, but I mean, there's there's reasons why. As later on, I'm sure you're gonna ask me, was there hour and things like that that, that where things kind of evolved again for all that. Yeah. Um, but I don't have like, and synthesis was cool. And, and I, I really enjoyed the two releases we had. I'm very, very happy with those. Um, but there's no doubt I'm happier with where I'm at right now. Yeah, well, I think that's natural then to, to jump along to, to Zero Hour, because I know there's a lot of fans out there that are have been hoping ever since, uh, you know, Dark Deceiver was released. And that, that's right. quite a few year, years ago that that the band would would at one point come together or release new music again. And now you are sort of moving uh, again since, since last year. We're mixing right now. Yeah. We're mixing right now. So. It's so good, man. Yeah. I'm I'm, really excited about it. Yeah. I'm very, very happy to hear that as, as a big fan of the band uh, myself, but um, I see, you know, there's a. I'm I'm sorry not to cut you off, but fans uh, who were tower fans and everything. Yeah. They're, they're gonna be so stoked, man. I mean, because it's just it's it, man. I mean, I wish I could play it for you right now. We're we're all on a, a big high about it, man. It's uh we you're gonna ask about the guys, and I, I'm gonna be happy to talk about them. That's as well, what cause... that's what I wanted to talk about next, because of course there's a, yeah. a partly at least a new lineup, right? Uh and you have right. uh, Eric uh, back on vocals now, is isn't that right? Oh. Yeah. So who who's the lineup now and and what can you tell me about these guys you're you're playing with now? Yeah. Well, we have like probably one of the most amazing I mean, of course I'm going to be biased, but I really feel this way they have one of the most amazing rhythm sections and I mean and you know uh, if there was a guy to do you know Going, I'm going to just go kind of from the beginning of how, how things came together because it seems like I could go off the curve with all this stuff because so many things come to your head when it comes of to Of course, this stuff. let's, like, let's, let's so, hear it from the start. Yeah, so basically my brother just kept saying, hey, why don't you just reform Zero yeah. Hour? Why don't you do it? He said, no, you're not in it. Why is you know, the process and everything? And then there was a time I went to go visit him and uh, he said, you know, I don't see why... You just don't reform the band. And I said, yeah, well, okay. And then I was like, that's enough for that. But then uh, that same trip, I went to go see Rule's band. Uh, they were performing in Moscow. And uh said, hey, man, I'm going to come see your band. And everything. So, dude, we got to meet up. Let's, you know, I got VIP for you. Come on. Let's, you know. And, and so I met up with him, and he's such a great guy and my god is that guy such a great drummer yeah he is fantastic. So, so good and what happened is then rule being the great guy is to say hey man you do zero hour you know or anything like that or if you have something going on uh, I'll, I'll do it i would i said 
That was the first. So if anybody wants to thank anybody, it's Roll. Nice. Yeah, I mean, he's the guy that got me. Thank you know, you. I, of course, my brother too, but it happened all in the same sequence. And I'm like, well, I wasn't thinking about it before, but I just know this guy is the perfect guy. Yeah. Because he's just so passionate about music like I am. You know, whenever I talk to Roll, he's just so passionate. And then... He then mentioned, uh, and I, it's so crazy because then I have my buddy, Wayne Joyner, who does all these amazing things for like Dream Theater. And all. I mean, he's, I love that guy. He's one of my best friends. He's one of my biggest supporters, even when I'm like, yeah, I don't know, man. And he's a dude. Yeah, you know, Zero Hour is a legendary band, man. What's going on? You know what I mean? And I, so I love Wayne. But, and he mentioned even, I, it was so crazy that, he said, you know, the bass player you should get, man, yeah. is Andrea. He is, you know, your brother is insane. So you need an insane guy. Exactly. And there's, he's the guy. He's the perfect fit. You know, yeah. if you're going to have somebody go, because Troy was, yeah, I was like, how are we going to have somebody? That's it. With Troy? That's it, right, yeah. And, it, and so I heard that, but then. Uh, but I didn't even think much about it the, because I was like, well, the guy's, you know, doing his thing. And, yep. you know, I don't know. But then Rule said, hey, man, I'm going to reach out to Andreas. I'm like, wow, this is like so weird. Like this is all happening like this right yeah. now. You know what I mean? It's just like it's something's being thrown at me to take and, and just grab hold of it and run with it. You know what I mean? It's what it was happening. I mean, it, it was just happening organically like yeah. this and i said yeah go ahead and talk to that guy bro <laughs> i was like go ahead let's see let's see what's happening and then uh i i talked to andreas and man what a a great guy so humble and and a just a, a real class act and man we we, we came like let's do this and Rule was great because he says, "Hey, I believe in this project, yeah. Andreas. I, we should do this. Yeah, you I should be involved in this." And then, uh, so, and I'll tell you, man, it, I gave them the music, and these guys just poured their hearts out and knocked it out so quick. I mean, I was like, "What are what's going on right now? This is just having this amazing flow of everything." And I did reach out to Eric, and uh, see, and I skipped something because then Eric. Posting something on Facebook saying he put up, uh, oh my gosh, I'm so terrible with the titles of our songs that I'm going to end me. It's the fourth song off of Towers of Avarice, the the clean song, yeah. where he does an amazing, Reflections. Yeah. yeah. Reflections. He did Reflections. And he posted that up and he said, anybody need a singer? Ha, ha, ha. And I'm like, what? What the fuck this am I doing? Be, yeah, yeah. This has got to be a thing here. Yeah. So I contacted Eric. I said, hey, Eric, craziest thing here. I'm thinking about forming Zero Hour again. Mm. And I got some guys who were great. Thing is, I'm not going to do it if we're not going to support the album by like playing live. What, yeah. I mean, I want to do everything. I don't want to say we're just going to throw a record out there and that's it i said if you're interested in doing an album and performing live then cool if not no worries man yeah, yeah. it's all good i mean i'm just kind of and he said yes yes let's do it and this is where we came to you know what i mean and we got in the studio and i was like these guys i mean especially you know rule and and andreas they just they motivated me so much yeah. and God bless them for that. They were fantastic. So they brought this musical journey uh, just to the highs, man. You know what I mean? And it's just going to, I can't wait for everybody to hear that. I mean, I have two releases. I'm so proud of to be at the same yeah. time. You know what I mean? I mean, obviously it's going to come out later, but man, do we have God, a planet? And I'm like, and and they're different, you know. Yeah. It's just like I feel like I'm bringing the best of both worlds for what what I have, and this it's just great, man. Yeah, it's musically things are just they're popping right now. 
So is, is there is there a timetable at all? You know, a little hint for the fans to when when we can hope to hear some zero hour music again. We uh, I can't announce everything, and there will be announcements made. Yeah, and they're all very positive announcements. Yeah, they this will be. I'm gathering somewhere in November is when we'll start announcing things mm -hmm. because there will have to be the process of also a dying planet deserves yeah needs its, its space you know, yeah. Brain, yeah you know what I mean this is a great album and it's this is this, this is what I'm about right now and then yeah. I'm excited that we're going to be so that we're pushing this and then at I, early uh, next year is yeah. when you'll see Zero Hour I out see. for sure well, for sure. Well, I think that's that's a, a, a great note to end it on. You know, now I think right. people can enjoy soon this uh, this uh, new uh, Dying Planet album out on September the seventeenth, and then right. towards the end of the year, maybe we'll hear some news, and and next year we might have a new Zero Hour uh, album to enjoy. So, so you'll hear the, yeah. I, I I definitely know you'll hear news at the end of the year, and we will have that out early in yeah. Yeah. It, it'll, be, it'll all come together. Yeah, no, we're 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 far in the mixing process right now. So, it, and you just have to coordinate things. Once things are coordinated, I yeah. mean, it will come together. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being on the Pro thank Talks you, with man. me, Jason. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and not you guys out there listening and watching, you should of course all follow uh, Jason and Dying Planet and Zero Hour on all their social medias. There will be links in the description, like always. And I also uh, highly recommend you to check out uh, When the Skies Are Grey, when the album drops on the 17th of September. You know, I'm guessing you can listen to it on all streaming services. Or even better, support the guys. Go to Bandcamp, buy the album. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's definitely worth it. Yeah. Pre-order it on the... Uh, with Life Force Records, who have yeah. been amazing to us. So yeah, so go and listen, get it, get support the band, get the music, and as always, you know, thanks for watching the show. Give us a like and a subscription if you enjoy what we're doing. Uh, it helps us. Until next time, stay safe and keep spreading that prog love. The Prog Talks, produced by the Prog Space. Main host, Rune Belsvik Reynos. Produced by Rune Belsvik Reynos, Vanessa and Matthias Kirsch. All graphics and animations by Vanessa Kirsch. Intro theme by Giuseppe Negri. Outro theme by Zach Munovitz. This was the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. See you in a week.